Hi, I wanted to show you a very cool site today called Goose Chase. If you've never heard of Goose Chase before, it is a site that lets you create scavenger hunts uh, to share out with participants. So this is really cool. I will say um, to use it with students, check with your district because I know some districts, ours in particular right now, will not let you use Goose Chase because they don't have a signed data sharing agreement with them. Um, so definitely check that out with your district. But I know our district in particular does use Goose Chase with at conferences and stuff with teachers. So even if you can't use it with students, it's really cool to use with staff. You also may be able to use it um, with parents at home using parent devices as an option. So, you know, just check around, but Goose Chase is a really cool program. And I'm gonna show you how to create a scavenger hunt today that you could hopefully use with students, but if not, maybe with your staff. So you will go to goosechase.com on a desktop. When you are creating scavenger hunts and missions, you need to be on a desktop to do so, or a laptop, um, you know, not a mobile device. So I am going to log in here to my account and look at the games. Uh, I will show you the different plans here. So make sure that you are, when you go to goosechase.com and you're signing up, that you sign up for the educator accounts and you can get the educator basic account for free. And that will probably do everything that you need it to do um, at, at the beginning and possibly forever. You can have one live game going at a time. So um, that may be all that you need. All right, back to my account over here. So once you log in, you can click on my games at the top to see all of the games that you have um, created and have going on. If you want to create a new game, you are going to simply click new game. And then you have to enter some game info at the beginning before you can really get into creating the missions. So the first thing I want you to do is upload an image. Um, I am going to go to Unsplash. If you've never used Unsplash before, that is a great place to get some free photos that you can use for projects. So I have actually already downloaded this zebra image. I'm going to do an animal game. So if I were doing this game for real, I would probably put some text on my image to let you know like what the title of the game was and the grade level that it was for or something. But I'm, I'm just playing around with this, so I'm just going to upload the plain image of animals. All right, so this will be my animal game. And then you need to give your game a name. So let's say that I am doing animals, and this is for grade two. All right. Game description. So this is where you put in, you know, whatever you want to help you identify the game, the rules. Um, if you are going to have like a reward for the winners, maybe add that in there. So I'll put something like complete as many missions as possible to climb the leaderboard. To show your knowledge. Of animals. And again, I would put in something about, you know, a reward or something if that was the case. Game location. Um, I never use that. I don't really use the GPS option ever for schools. Um, game password. I would recommend this. So if you are sending this out to students or someone, um, you would probably only want those students to be able to join the game and not random people who maybe found your game. So you would want to put in a game password and give that to your participants so that they could join. And then you're, you would click save and continue and it takes you to your missions page. So now that you have your basic game info in, you are ready to create your missions. Now you do have mission banks and you can look at your previous missions if you know that you've created some previously that would kind of work for the game that you're creating now. I will say I've never really found anything too helpful in the mission banks. Um, I think probably because this is used mostly in the business world and not so much in the education world at the moment um, that I just haven't found a lot of helpful things there. But no worries because it is super easy to create your own missions. I'm going to go up and click add mission to list. Now the first thing I notice is that there's a little icon over here beside my mission. Um, it looks like a camera. So right now I am creating a photo video mission. 
So you have to think, what type of mission do I want my students to do? So if you want them to take a picture of something, then this is the type of mission you would want. If you want them to type in the answer, then you would want a text mission. And then if you were using GPS, which I said, I usually just ignore that and I never use those, um, but that option is there. So I'm gonna leave an old photo video and I'm gonna say marvelous mammals. All right, so um, maybe my mission would be find a mammal and snap a photo of it. Can't find one in real life. Be creative. Can you find one on TV? In a book? In a magazine? So I want to give them some options there. All right, and then I can go up and I can change the point value. Um, maybe I want to do a custom value. If I want lower points, then I could do 10. And then I did want this to be a photo, remember. So I can go to advanced settings and photos and videos. Right now they could submit a photo or a video. If I want it to be a photo only, I could choose that. And so now they're only allowed to take a picture, um, not a video for this one. And then save. And you can see I have one mission and it is worth 10 points. So let's add another mission over here. Super easy. So I am going to say mammal description. And I'm going to change this one to a text. What covers the body of a mammal? Let's see, I'm going to check out the mammal covering. All right, so, and then I can change the point value again. Maybe I want this to be a 5.1. And this is a text one I already have. So, okay. So down here when it's a text one, you can um, go ahead and put in accepted answers if you want them to have like a correct answer only. If you leave it without any accepted answers here, then they can put in whatever they want and they get the points for that. So since this is uh, as a text-based mission with a right or wrong answer, I might want to put in what the accepted answers are. And then if a student puts in something random, it would not give them the points and it would have them to keep trying. So the accepted answers for this might be fur or hair. So you're just gonna hit enter to you know, make that populate as one of the options, hair or fur hair, fur. Okay, so those are going to be my accepted answers. So you really have to think of the different um, combinations, ways that they could put in the answers, because um, if I just put hair or fur, and they type in fur or hair, then it would be wrong. So that gets kind of tricky there, trying to make sure you have all the possible answers that you would um, have as acceptable. Once you have those in there, then just click save. All right, so now you see I have two missions. One is a five point mission, one is a 10 point mission. So I would just keep adding missions like that until I got to maybe, you know, 10 missions, 20 missions would be a really good scavenger hunt game. And then you could come over here, um, participants. So this is where you would decide if you want your participants to play in teams or if they are going to play as individual players. And then you could um, go ahead and put in, pre-create the player profiles, or you could have them just join with the code and create their player profile um, once they join. So when I'm doing teams, I usually pre-create the player profiles like team one, team two, and so forth. But if I'm having them do individual players, I usually just have them join with the code and do that themselves. All right, start and stop the game. So when you're all set with your missions and your participants, then you're ready to start and stop the game. So you can do that manually or you can have it set up to do automatically. If you choose automatically, then you can choose a date and a time when you would like for the game to start automatically um, and when you would like for it to end. If you are doing manual, then you could start the game whenever you hit the start button. And you could say, I would like for it to last for seven days. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start the game right now. 
And so you see that it popped up down here as live. So that means my game is active right now and it will end in seven days, which would be on April 24th. So a couple of ways to do that. All right, so now my game is set up. That's how easy it is to set up a scavenger hunt. Um, when you come back to your My Games here during the hunt, you do have some options to monitor your scavenger hunt. You can click on activity feed and that's kind of like, um, think of it as like Facebook or Instagram or something. It's going to have the live feed of the submissions as they're coming in. I really don't use that too often. You can check in on the leaderboard to see, you know, which participants are in the lead. And then the one that I use the most is submissions. So you can come here and you can check your submissions. Um, if I were doing this with a class of students, then this would be great to use after the game. You could look and check the submissions together and kind of see what everyone did during the game. So you can check by um, missions themselves. So if I wanted to see what did everyone submit for that marvelous mammals submission, then we could pull that up, um, that one mission up and look at everybody's responses. Or we could group the submissions by teams and look at all of the submissions by one team at a time. So that's pretty cool that you can do that. Um, that's I found that really useful, like if you are doing say one of your submissions is about reading and you have them take a picture of their favorite reading spot of them reading in that reading spot then you could then go and download the submissions from that mission so that you could have all of those pictures of students reading in their favorite reading spots and then you would have those pictures to print for a bulletin board or something so that's a pretty cool option all right, and then um, at the bottom you see the game code. So that's where your code is that you would send to students. And remember, if you put a password in, then you would need to send them the game code and the password that you chose so that they could join your game. Again, if you're wanting to monitor the game, um, create the game, you need to be on a desktop or a laptop um, version to do that. But for participating in the games, you would need to be on a mobile phone or a tablet to do so. So I hope that that gives you a little introduction to Goose Chase and it's something that you will explore and have fun with.